There is pretty astonishing news out of Brazil tonight, and it involves far-right President Jair Bolsonaro, the man whom the BBC dubbed the Trump of the Tropics. A special Senate committee report accuses Bolsonaro of committing crimes against humanity for willfully worsening the COVID pandemic in that country. Brazil has suffered more deaths from coronavirus than any other nation on Earth, except the United States. And Brazil's per capita death rate is actually 30% higher than America's. But Bolsonaro said he's bored by questions about COVID and people who worry about it are sissies. Quote, all of us are going to die one day, he said. After 50 televised hearings, Brazilian legislators say most of those deaths are Bolsonaro's fault. The report recommends nine criminal charges for Bolsonaro, ranging from corruption and charlatanism to crimes against humanity. It also recommends charges for 69 other people, including Bolsonaro's three older sons, who all hold government offices. Under Bolsonaro, the report says the Brazilian government ignored science and acted recklessly. It says he pushed for herd immunity by deliberately exposing the population to a concrete risk of mass infection. It says he actively discouraged social distancing and the wearing of masks, leading to more deaths. It says he pushed so-called treatments against COVID-19, such as hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, even after most of the claims about those drugs were debunked. And it accused Bolsonaro, his aides and his family members of running a network of friendly conservative TV and social media accounts which pervade COVID disinformation. That's in addition to a so-called cabinet of hate that Bolsonaro ran to mobilize attacks against his political opponents, according to the report. Hmm. Ignoring science, pushing sham treatments, dismissing proven preventive measures like masking, using family members to blast out false information, coordinating coordinating attacks on political enemies. You might be asking yourself, didn't Donald Trump do all of that too? Why isn't he facing prosecution for crimes against humanity, quote unquote? I'm asking myself the same thing. The similarities between the Trump and Bolsonaro cases are uncanny, with one exception. Bolsonaro, who got COVID last year, has refused to take a vaccine and has expressed skepticism over whether the vaccines work. And Trump, well, he is vaccinated and loved taking credit for the development of those vaccines. That is, until he stopped being president and saving lives became another guy's problem. But the question remains, if the Brazilians can try and hold President Bolsonaro to account for the preventable deaths of hundreds of thousands due to COVID, why is no one here in the US, no Democrats, holding former President Donald Trump to account for preventable deaths of hundreds of thousands from COVID on his watch? Let's ask one of the only lawyers in the country who's been making that case. Joining me now is Glenn Kirshner, legal analyst for NBC News and MSNBC and a former longtime federal prosecutor. Glenn, welcome back to the show. When you first saw this news about the criminal referral for Bolsonaro, was your reaction the same as my reaction? Why haven't we done this? Exactly, Meti. And actually, my reaction was it looks like the Senate in Brazil is accusing him of being reckless, maybe extremely reckless. And I actually thought if only Donald Trump were only reckless, more Americans would be alive today because Donald Trump lied to the American people. And, and the nice thing about it, nice is perhaps the wrong word, is we can use his own words to prove it when and if any prosecutor, state or federal, decides to bring a case against Donald Trump and others in the administration for avoidable COVID deaths. We can prove that Donald Trump is responsible because he lied to the American people. We all heard yes. him in press conference after press conference making absurd claims about how it's a hoax and it's going to go away with the warm weather. All the while, what we didn't know is that he also told Bob Woodward that in tapes yes. that were later released, basically that all of those things were lies. He told Bob Woodward about just how deadly the virus was, just how easily spread the virus was, how the, the virus was so much more aggressive than even some of our most aggressive flus. And then he went out and told the American people the exact opposite. Methy, that's not recklessness. That's so intentionally putting Americans in harm's way by lying to them. So, Glenn, what I love about having you on the show is you always set me up for my next question. We're always thinking alike. Let's have a listen. We got the clips here that you just mentioned, what Trump did when it came to what he said to Woodward and what he said in public. Here he is speaking in late February 2020 when he put Mike Pence in charge of the national response. Let's have a listen. 
But that's a little bit like the flu. It's a little like the regular flu that we have flu shots for. And we'll essentially have a flu shot for this in a fairly quick manner. You got Ebola. That was it. Uh, this one is different, much different. This is a flu. This is like a flu. This is like a flu, he said, in public and yet in a private phone conversation, as you mentioned, with journalist Bob Woodward on February the 7th, two and a half weeks before that public briefing, he said this. It's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. This is more deadly. This is five per, you know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. He knew he was downplaying the risk. In fact, in a later conversation with Woodward, he even says that. He says, quote, I always wanted to play it down. Is that not legally actionable? It is legally actionable. And, and days like today, Matthew, make my heart sink because when I was chief of homicide at the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia, responsible for overseeing all murder cases in D.C., I would have already been in the grand jury presenting Donald Trump's words to the American people as juxtaposed against Donald Trump's words to Bob Woodward. And ultimately, after a full fair presentation to the grand jury, I would have asked the grand jury whether there was enough evidence to indict Donald Trump for an admittedly low level of homicide, negligent homicide or involuntary manslaughter. And it's even worse, though, as bad as those clips are, remember when he mocked reporter Jeff Mason for wearing a mask, told Jeff Mason to take yes. it off, Jeff Mason, to his credit, refused. What did Donald Trump say? Well, I guess that's because you're being politically correct. Do you know how a statement like that might permeate Donald Trump's base, the people who listen to him and make their behavioral decisions in their day-to-day -day lives accordingly? Can't you see Donald Trump supporters saying, I don't want to be politically correct the way the president yeah. accused Jeff Mason of being all of this? shows, I think beyond dispute, Donald Trump has criminal liability for avoidable COVID deaths, and it will so, only take a brave, determined prosecutor to present the case to the so, grand jury. And yet again, you set me up for my next question. Where is that brave prosecutor? You mentioned that this is what you would have done. You're retired from being a prosecutor. Where are the prosecutors currently serving who are saying what you're saying, that this is beyond doubt? This is very, very clear. This has happened in the open. We see prosecutors uh, going after Trump for his taxes. We see prosecutors going after Trump for election interference in Georgia. We see prosecutors going after Trump perhaps for issues related to the inauguration in 2016. We're not seeing a single prosecutor in America even talking about this stuff. And up until now, you and I have been discussing this on and off for 18 months. Up until now, it was like, OK, well, you know, maybe this is fantasy land. But the Brazilians are doing it. Nobody wants to be the prosecutor who takes the maiden legal voyage against a former president who inarguably committed crimes. I, I feel like a lot of prosecutors want to be the second one to bring charges against Donald Trump, but they don't want to be the first. In my opinion, Donald Trump will be indicted, whether it's first in New York, first in Georgia, first federally by the Department of Justice, or maybe somewhere else in the nation. And then I, I think once we see one indictment drop, every prosecutor is then wanna, gonna wanna get into the prosecuting Donald Trump business because they won't have to be the one who takes the first legal voyage and bears all the criticism that will come when Donald Trump is ultimately indicted somewhere for one of his crimes. Very interesting analysis. We will have to wait and see how this pans out. Glenn Kirshner, always appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.